Uh, we have been working in Mekele for some time because as UNFPA globally, we've been in Ethiopia for the past 50 years. We celebrated the 50th anniversary uh, early this year, so we are still in the celebration of the anniversary. Uh, but in doing so, we also know that we have challenges as everywhere uh, in some part of the country. And... Uh, when the situation uh, broke here in, um, in Mekele, uh, let's say in Tigre in general, and also the various regions around uh, Tig uh, Tigre, I think UNFPA has been present in ensuring that we also contribute as part of the solidarity that we are all bringing together to ensure that we also address uh, the need, especially of the most vulnerable population who are women, children, girls, and young people. So it is on that note that uh, we are receiving uh, our senior officials uh, in Geneva, Shoko, who is heading uh, the division of humanitarian for UNFPA Global, and then Andrew uh, Sabeton, who is our director for management services based in New York, who are coming to Ethiopia to also take stock of what we do, discuss with you as our direct partners, and assess the needs also, and see what can we do, maybe more and best, to alleviate the suffering of the people we serve especially women, girls, and young people. So this is what is bringing us here uh, this afternoon. And uh, if you permit me, I would like to give them the floor <laughs> for them, you know, <laughs> to <laughs> say something. So, Shoko? Thank you, you Kofi. Um, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, regional uh, dimension, uh, which um, also impacting the situation um, of the um, uh, Ethiopia, and then displacement is also huge. So, so uh, UNPA is very much uh, focusing on the service provision. It's not just waiting for the women and girls come and then receive the uh, the services, but we go there and then making sure that they are taken care of by uh, their sexual reproductive health, and then um, also the protection from the gender-based uh, violence. So now, as uh, um, our representatives say, that uh, um, now uh, we understand going into the recovery phase, um, how we can put the resilience perspective and then preparedness disaster risk reduction, um, making sure that uh, uh, there is um, a strength uh, uh, the build into the fabric of the society so that uh, uh, um, you can have uh, um, your own capacity to be able to protect um, your population and then also any potential disaster that we may. I mean, there's no disaster will always happen, uh, but uh, you know what, what we have to, it's not only the Ethiopia, all of us, actually disaster doesn't, um, disaster doesn't discriminate any population, but then how are we going to prepare and then how are we going to work together uh, to, to protect uh, the population is something, it's some, something really um, important. So thank you very much also receiving us and uh, um, looking forward to um, uh, what we can learn from here. And then again, I want to highlight, uh, uh, you know, I want, I want to make sure that uh, um, your challenges and then suffering and then what is the hope uh, in the future is not going to be forgotten uh, international community. So I, I commit myself to keep communicating and keep uh, raising a profile uh, of um, and then also the support we can provide to you conti continuously in the future. So thinking again, over to you, my colleagues, Andrew. 
Thank you very much and thank you for the warm welcome again. Uh, frankly, I don't actually get out to the field very much. I tend to be dealing with the capitals and the, um, yeah, the, the, the headquarter type locations. Uh, um, and it's actually the first time I've been able to, despite much planning, be able to accompany uh, Shoko on a humanitarian uh, mission. It's very important. I'm very much the, here to learn and observe as much as I am to um, you know, offer straight help um, because um, the, um, the my remit uh, as controller and director of management covers all areas of finance, all resource planning, uh, custody of funds, treasury. Um, also, I am the most senior risk officer, so I do actually have my team actually manage all the partnership arrangements, <coughs> etc., uh, and all relations with auditors and all donors and bodies as regards fiscal matters. Um, but um, why it's important for me to take a look is um, UNFPA is on a successful you know, is a successful organisation in the sense that it has really grown in the last five, six years really f to a middle-sized organisation now. It was small. We've doubled our revenue in the last ten years. But the structure of that is changing. Um, you know, in, in the last decade, firstly, we used to receive far, the f biggest majority of our income came without any earmarking. It, we were free to, to allocate it where we wanted to follow our mandate. Now, so we, when I joined uh, 14 years ago, it was 55% free, 45% was it's earmarked. Completely flipped the other way now. Actually, 72% of our uh, resources come in earmarked, and 28% is what we call core. All the growth is coming through to earmarked funding. And more importantly, really in the last 10 years, we've gone from having a handful of humanitarian operations to actually half our new money coming in on earmarking now is humanitarian. And so I'm taking a look at the, the business model because we, our business model was about development and, and how we supported that. It's a different, uh, you, you need a different structure, a different support mechanism, a different agility to actually work in that uh, humanitarian sphere. Uh, and that. and um, it's, it's against also a very, um, as, as we all know, UNFPA mandate is a very uh, emotive one. Um, we're under, we probably get a lot more scrutiny than most UN organisations and we probably face a fairly difficult funding environment with some of the the you know the political geopolitical spheres of some of our major donors so uh, it's my important to make sure every dollar you know gets to the beneficiary or the, the biggest proportion gets to every beneficiary uh, to the last mile so that's why I'm, I, I'm uh, here on this mission with Shoko and I'm ho hoping to learn a lot in uh, uh, not just the meetings we've already had but in the actual visiting some of the partners over these next couple of days thank you very much thank you the interim government of Tigray gives the highest priority for uh, this kind of humanitarian interactions. So we put a huge uh, value to your visit and uh, would like to uh, say express the situation here in Tigray and uh, uh, we are very happy that you came here. The level of uh, delegation both from New York and from Geneva is indicative of uh, the attention and the uh, weight that has been given by UN WFPA to the situation in, the, in this part of uh, the world. So we take note of uh, that and the significance of the visit. Uh, I think the overall to give you a, a picture of the overall situation, even though I am very much aware, and we are, all of us are aware that your focus as one agency of the UN is on uh, the most vulnerable group of society, but the overall situation, the overall humanitarian situation in Tigray affects primarily the groups that you are paying attention, the women, elderly, the young. Uh, in spite of the clear agreement in Pretoria, where we have clearly said uh, there, there has to be unhindered humanitarian assistance to Tigray. That's uh, agreement number one. If you go to the Pretoria agreement, uh, once we have put the principles, the first point is unhindered humanitarian access to Tigray. That has not happened. 
that's not happening. Uh, I know the reason was there was some misallocation of resources with regard to humanitarian assistance. The Tigray government took this issue seriously. The government established a committee, went through the process, and uh, rectified the misallocation of resources. Uh, and at the same time, this has been reported by our president, the most relevant uh, authorities. Uh, in spite of that, the improvement in terms of overall humanitarian assistance is extremely inadequate. It doesn't match the situation on the ground. I know this might not be uh, your uh, main area of jurisdiction, but given the weight of your offices and the role you play with UN agencies and the international humanitarian assistance, I think it's important to highlight how uh, this is affecting the overall situation in Tigray. Not only the socio-economic situation, it's actually affecting the politics as well. It's affecting the peace process itself as well. The, I, I stand to be corrected. The official report that has come up to now is something like uh, 1,500 people have died already because of hunger. And there is no uh, bright future in, in, uh, in sight because there was the issue of desert locust. There, was the issue, there is the issue of bad harvest. When you combine the almost uh, uh, no support from humanitarian agencies and add those elements together, the problem is very much compounded. And the result, the ultimate result of this compounded problem will fall into women, the elderly, children, uh, and they will be the most vulnerable group in, in society. So improving the overall humanitarian assistance and paying particular attention to the groups that you pay attention to would, be, uh, would have a very huge synergetic effect that will improve the whole situation, not only in terms of humanitarian assistance, but in terms of uh, people in Tigray are asking, OK, we have signed this territory agreement. Uh, what have we got? At least the minimum we could, go, we could get would have been unhindered humanitarian access, humanitarian assistance. That has not happened. Uh, I know the problem of humanitarian assistance is all over Ethiopia. It's not only particularly in Tigray. But uh, at this stage, we can only speak about Tigray. And uh, we have to explain this uh, situation. Uh, so this is the situation we are in. Uh, I assume you will go to various uh, places to visit and have first-hand information. Particularly, I'm glad that Dr. Emmanuel is here, who can guide you to uh, some of the most important sites that you'll, you'll uh, get some information from. Uh, but uh, I cannot stress the issue of humanitarian assistance and its linkage with peace in, uh, in Tigray. Uh, it, ha it has become, uh, things have become difficult even after the signing of the Pretoria Peace Agreement. Even though there are some uh, people are happy that there is no fighting anymore, the, the guns are, have been silenced and the people are going more or less to try to you know, recover and go into their daily business. But because of the natural issues that I have described earlier and the uh, uh, assistance not coming, humanitarian assistance not coming to Tigray has made things uh, extremely difficult. I think this is uh, very important to take note and, uh, of course, uh, discuss with your uh, uh, colleagues and superiors back in New York and uh, in Geneva as well. Uh, well, I think uh, apart from here, uh, if there are any particular either political or socio-economic situations that you would like to know about Tigray, I mean, uh, my colleagues and myself are uh, ready to respond to. But uh, again, we attach huge value to your visit. Uh, we, are, we are pleased that you have come with this big delegation and very senior uh, members of the
to UNFPA. Thank you very much, and uh, we are glad to have you here. We're going to visit some facilities, and then as I just to say at the beginning that uh, uh, food insecurity, malnutrition, and then yeah, yes. yeah. So th this is something like as you said that we we will really want to get the first uh, first hand experience to to also um, uh, uh, reinforce uh, the the discussion we are having uh, here, and um, we. Because the destruction and then suffering is so huge, um, I I see on the, only the numbers, but I'm sure that I'm going to see it and then visualize what exactly the the suffering that uh, you have been going through for the last two, you know two three uh, years, and uh, um, we. We spend uh, one day uh, in in Addis Ababa, and uh, also uh, the very beginning of the uh, the, uh, the assistance we have been providing in Tigray, um, um, 2021 or at the beginning of 2022, um, was the um, how um, how we can absorb the local uh, uh, capacity and then expertise like doctors and the nurses and, and midwives uh, into our program so that we can uh, keep delivering uh, SRH and then um, protection, uh, the services with with those who know the culture, who knows the language, and then who knows the, uh, the local context. And then I know that uh, a lot of them left uh, from the Tigray, but uh, we really hope that we can also bring back the, the capacity and then expertise so that we can continue building um, the basis of uh, uh, basis of the, the services that uh, uh, you need for the, the best. And then um, we are also uh, meeting uh, our UN partners. And then I was very impressed that even compared to two years ago when I was here, I couldn't come to uh, Tigray. Uh, at, at that time, my Anha's flight was canceled two, three times. Uh, and uh, uh, but uh, um, and then locust um, and then other aspect of the uh, the humanitarian assistance, I will make sure to also talk to the FAO and then other UN partners to uh, make sure that uh, not only but uh, but uh, you know we really need to have more integrated multi-sectoral uh, response because uh, you need the food, you need also the longer term livelihood and then agriculture uh, so that you have sustainable food supplies and then so that the, the women and girls also get uh, 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 you know the health uh, and and plus in the, not forget about education because uh, I know that uh, the majority of the school are destroyed and, and then the education system is not back. Uh, yet, so I think this is also something our you know UNICEF uh, the partners and you know we we, we, we want to make sure that uh, the, uh, the you know children and back particularly girls go going back. I want to ask two questions. One is that uh, um, you His Excellency uh, highlighted you know the social uh, econ social economic situation how you how how you see particularly how you see the uh, the local capacity. Um, and then, wh what do you are? Are you doing something to the build local capacity? Uh, because 40% uh, um, of UNFPA's humanitarian assistance usually goes to the local partners, and then localization of the assistance is very important for us. And uh, because also the sustainability and the making sure that uh, um, we are not coming in and leaving. And then there's a capacity, and then the services stay uh, at the local level, and and so we want to hear your perspective, particularly women-led organization, and then because the the specific needs of the women can be really usually uh, serviced uh, much better by the women's uh, uh, leadership. Then how? So the second question is youth. When I mention about uh, young generation and how how you are absorbing their their energy, and then how you are also you know how we can also working together to make sure that they they don't lose hope, uh, and we can keep uh, engaging them so that they are, they feel like they are part of recovery. Um, uh, for the Tigray. So those are the two questions I have for you, otherwise, please. I would say the people of Tigray are extremely industrious. They they want to help themselves. 
they are very creative in terms of uh, you know making things make making ends meet with the resources available to them and uh, the whole environment in Tigray is an environment of trying to come out of the predicaments that we were in war famine uh, health problems all that issues this includes women women are uh, uh, I don't know the, the uh, in every, like in any other any other society, they are the center of the household activities. Uh, so I don't know. I cannot go into the details of some specific issues, but generally uh, there is a local uh, endeavor and local desire to help oneself and come out of uh, the situation. One important element that I should have mentioned earlier, which uh, should be taken into consideration, is uh, the major surplus areas in Tigray are still under occupation, particularly Western Tigray and Southern Tigray. Those are areas where surplus food was uh, being produced, not only to supply the communities they live in that area, but to make surplus available to other parts. This has not been resolved yet. Still, uh, we have more than 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, I don't know, I don't exactly know the number, IDPs in Tigray, internally displaced people in Tigray. They are living under extremely difficult condition. So, in relation to the question that you raised, uh, what are you doing to, you know, to create local capacity and then contribute towards recovery? This fact by itself makes things extremely difficult. It's not uh, lack of desire, it's not lack of industriousness, but the political environment that has not been resolved up to now uh, creates a huge burden not only to the particular areas of Western Tigray and Southern Tigray, but to the whole population in Tigray as well. Whatever uh, people get to, you know, to come out of the predicament, to come out of the problem, will be shared among uh, so many dependents and inter internal displaced people. So its impact becomes extremely low. And you add to this the lack of humanitarian assistance. All those things are very much compounded uh, together. So my, uh, uh, my understanding is there's a great deal of uh, industriousness, there's a great deal of desire, political commitment to come out of the situation. There is local capacity in terms of knowledge and commitment to work. Women are central to this kind of uh, activities because they are the ones who are faced with the problem more than anybody else. Uh, by being the center of the household in every house, uh, but the the problems are not uh, simple. They are not easy problems that we can surmount very easily. They are very very difficult. That makes things very very hard. But we, even with this situation, people are fighting every day. You know, they go to all sorts of activities from uh, manual labor to uh, high-level intellectual uh, outputs and try to come out of... Uh, there is a great desire of coming out of the predicament and coming out and try to recover. That will, that, that drive, that energy is still uh, clearly visible in the people of Tigray and in uh, the women of Tigray. But this is being exercised, exercised under very difficult situation. I think uh, it's important that uh, when you go back to your places to see the whole situation in a very interrelated manner. You know, for example, the uh, IDPs are very much related with the uh, not implementing the Pretoria Agreement of people going to their place and settle there, uh, take care of their life, and some of them could have even supported some other people. But now, they are dependent. 
So that aggravates the humanitarian situation. Those things are very much uh, interrelated. So I think for us as UNFPA, um, we are really delighted to partner with you. And this is why uh, our senior officials are here, so, so, that, so that they can fulfill their full potential. Because we know that they have the capacity to contribute to the development of this country. But they can only do that if we are able to move them from the situation in which uh, they are. And that will not be, it won't be the uh, only one institution who can do it. And this is where uh, Shoko was talking about the multi-sectorial uh, or multi-partner support that can be um, maybe put forward as one of the approaches for um, for to, to support the administration here so that the people of Tigray can uh, continue to live a life, a fulfilling life, or a fulfilled life, uh, so that they can contribute to the development of, uh, of Tigray and Ethiopia uh, as a country. So thank you so much. We are going to continue engaging our uh, technical partners and uh, we'll be meeting um, um, our technical partners from tomorrow, not so? Uh, Thursday. Thursday, okay. So, exactly. And also, we'll be going to the, to the field. At the grad, uh, we'll go to Sabake. Sabake? Yes, Sabakari. Sabakari, okay. Sabakari. To also um, see. Sabakari. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, I think, I, I don't know whether we'll have the opportunity to visit also the, uh, the warehouse, the logistical warehouse where we have all the consignments. Thank you. Uh,